Hello, I am Staff Sergeant, Foreman of Signals, Dave Jarvis, and this video is part of a series of vlogs I'm doing with the aim of improving and encouraging cycling. Today I'm going to talk about nutrition, and I'm going to try and keep it short and simple by focusing on four key points. Fluids, fueling before, during and after, keeping it small but regular, and testing and adjusting. Now, the most important thing for me when I'm thinking about nutrition is fluids. Um, consider the fact that water makes up over 90, over 60% sorry, of your uh, body. Um, it's involved in pretty much all of the um, bodily functions on a daily basis. Things like lubricating your joints, uh, organ function, digestive tract, stomach acids, brain function, um, blood flow, nutrient delivery, the list goes on and on and on. Um, very, very important in my opinion. Um, you will uh, notice the effects of dehydration when you've lost less than 1% of your water content to your body. 2% you'll imp will impact your physical performance and 10% is all that's needed to, to become life-threatening. So um, it is, you don't need to lose a lot for it if you start suffering from the effects, okay? Um, so very, very important. Um, so arguably, arguably my most important top tip I can give you across all my videos is before any physical activity, make sure you are properly hydrated, okay? Um, and the same goes for cycling as well, of course. Um, second to that is learn to maintain your fluid level throughout the activity, okay? Don't rely on one big um, replen stop. Keep on top of it throughout, all right? Set the alarm on your bike computer, your watch, your smartwatch, your phone, whatever. Um, anyone that used to ride with me might remember my bike computer beeping at me every 10 or 15 minutes. That's what it was doing, that's why. Because it's difficult to get in these habits. Um, it takes time to develop them. So having little reminders just keeps you, you know, keeps you right. Um, so, um, hydrate properly beforehand and maintain efficiently throughout, okay? Um, now, fueling. Um, there are benefits to fasted rides, um, but I'll leave that for the experienced riders. Uh, the key aim is to avoid bonking, okay, too early. Um, bonking is the word is the word we use to describe um, the, the effect where you lose all energy. Um, you've, every pedal stroke becomes a labour. You've had literally had turned yourself inside out, um, and you've got nothing left in a nutshell. Um, basically, you need to keep on top keep on top of your energy levels in a nutshell. So um, by that, I'm primarily talking about glycogen levels, um, the energy you get from carbs. Um, so top tip for the newcomers is make sure you have a decent meal before uh, about two to three hours before you start okay um, now by a decent meal I'm talking a well-balanced meal google it there's a range of different things that you can recipes and, and proportion sizes and everything compared to different food groups or whatever um, if I recommend anything it would be to focus on the slow burning carbs things like rice pasta potatoes um, breakfast time porridge is an obvious one um, things like that because that will make sure your glycogen levels are as good as they can be um, you know, uh, uh, ahead of time. Um, the um, This is where you hear, may have heard of expressions like carb loading, where people have been doing it over several days. That, that's why, they're trying to get the glycogen levels as, as, as good as they can be. Um, the other thing to that as well is uh, caffeine. Now, um, if you're not a coffee drinker, maybe worth considering. If not, you know, it's not vital, but caffeine's been shown to promote the use of your fat uh, for energy instead of the, 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 the glycogen. Um, the benefit there is, is that you can save the glycogen for the more intense sections like hills and things of that nature. Um, fat burns for longer, uh, less of it will burn for longer. Uh, so it will, it will last you longer if you can use it. Um, not so much, not so important if you're doing short intense sessions, but if you're doing three plus hours, you know, you, you will feel the benefit from it. Um, Bottom line is if you can save your, use your glycogen only when you need to, winner, okay? So, um, decent meal, two to three hours beforehand, focusing on hot, on slow burning carbs, um, hydrate properly, okay? Get a couple of cups of coffee down your grid one or two hours beforehand, jobs are good. Um, now, um, what you do during, it depends on the type of activity you're doing, duration and intensity, okay? Now, if I'm doing 60 minutes, intense, so maybe a criterion race, crit race, um, interval training, um, e-racing may come under this as well, but I'll let them comment if, it's, if they think this is correct or not. Um, I would just stick to fluids personally. Um, if anything, I would uh, keep my electrolytes topped up, so I would make myself a homemade hypotonic drink. Um, I received some really good advice from a trusted mate uh, a while back um, to try and stick fresh, where, keep fresh where possible. Not so easy to do in the military, uh, in a variety of jobs for that matter. Um, when I'm away from home, you know, supplements do have their benefits. They're easy, they're convenient, you know, they're keeping simple. 
but when I'm at home, I like to try and make things at home. Um, I can make them to taste and I can get them, you know, right for me. Um, so a hypotonic drink, for me, I'll have about half a, half a litre of fluids um, every hour, give or take, um, depending on, you know, climate, heat, humidity, indoors, outdoors, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but in a half litre bottle, I would have um, about 20%, give or take, fruit juice. Um, pineapple's my preference, just because I like the taste. Um, a pinch of table salt, normal, any common garden table salt's fine, um, and top it off with water. So a ratio of one to four, one to five, um, fruit juice to water, okay? Um, and that's why I'd have for an hour, maybe 90 minutes, depending on intensity. Um, 90 minutes, I'd probably have a banana in back pocket, but, but that's it um, the, for towards the end. Um, beyond 90 minutes, that's when I'd start thinking about solid foods, okay? Um, up to three hours, um, I'd be looking at um, things like flapjacks, granola bars, you know, things that can be easily made, homemade, rice cakes, um, homemade jam sandwiches. Um, yeah, my dad grows his own fruit and gives me jars of it every now and again. It's great. Rhubarb's fantastic. <laughs> um, um, peanut butter sandwiches as well, because it's another source of fat and protein and stuff as well. Um, uh, on top of the carbs and the bread. Um, what else? Uh, but yeah, that, that would be me for three hours. So again, mouthful regularly, every sort of 15, 20 minutes, I'd have an alarm go off. Um, in terms of sandwiches, I'd have maybe a slice of bread with, um, with a jam or peanut butter or a bit of both. Um, every hour, um, two slices of malt loaf per hour, maybe, uh, maybe slightly less, um, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, anyone that used to attend my training camps will remember the flapjacks that my wife used to make. I think most people could, will agree the chocolate ones were the best, and uh, oh, don't worry, I'll encourage you to do it again for the next one. <laughs> um, thank you for all the contributions, by the way, all of it went to, to charity for that, um, to the Royal Singles Charity. Um, the, if I'm going beyond three hours, I will start to think about um, you eating more. So three hours, especially over six hours, I would start thinking about things that are more easily digestible. Um, I've got to think about stopping because I can't carry enough on the bike um, to last more than three hours, really, unless I have a rucksack. So I either factor in shop stops, um, have a support car. Um, if it's an event, if there's a feed station, I would start thinking about easily digestible foods. So when I did my 400k ride last year and I had a sport car, I had cans of soup in the back, vegetable soup, uh, rice pudding, a couple of spoonfuls, you know, periodically, um, interspersed with sandwiches, a bit of fresh fruit, um, energy drinks, plain water. Main thing there as well is variety. Easily, easily digestible and variety, okay? Um, and keeping on top of it. Very, very important to maintain it if you're doing really long endurance events. Um, um, yeah, afterwards then. Now, this is where it's very important to get the, the glycogen stores um, replenished, okay? So 20 to 30 minutes is really the gold window. Have something ready before you leave so that when you get back, it's right there. Um, you wanna get more carbs back down your grid and you want protein and fluids, okay? Bang it down your grid, it will resupply your energy glycogen stores and make them more effective um, for the next time you go out as well, okay? It also promotes um, fact, uh, more effective recovery as well. Um, so very important, have it ready beforehand. Um, size, now um, the body is limited how much your body can process in one go. And that pretty much applies to anything you put in it. Um, water, protein, um, fats, and carbohydrates as well. So um, studies have shown that the, the gold number is somewhere in the realms of about 30 to 60 grams of protein, of carbohydrate, sorry, per hour. Okay, so uh, put that in perspective, two slices of, uh, reasonable slices of malt loaf is 50 grams, um, approximately. So uh, bear that in mind when you're prepping your food up and what you're gonna take in the hour. Too much in one go it can be has negative effects, just like not enough, okay? Um, small but often, properly chewed, um, will make it more easily digestible and more easily absorbed into the bloodstream, okay? So small, regular, set the alarms on your bike, got bike computer or your watch, okay? Um, and then lastly, be prepared to test and adjust, okay? Everyone's got different tastes, whether it's savory, sweet, um, try different things, okay? Um, it doesn't all need to be done on one ride. Try something different on the next one and the next one. And just make a mental note of how you feel about it, how you find it, the reactions you have in your body, if you get stomach cramps, whatever. Um, it's different things for different people, okay? Um, but yeah, any questions, as always, more than welcome. Um, strongly, I would really appreciate any of the uh, more experienced guys to uh, contribute any points they think would be relevant. Um, thank you to the guys that gave me the advice prior to this. I didn't just take this for myself, I went and asked questions. Um, hopefully you've all benefited from that. 
And um, yeah, as always, thank you very much for your time and look forward to the next one.